Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about marketing attribution. So more specifically, I'm gonna answer the question, why is my Shopify attributing some of the sales to Facebook, Google, or other marketing channel, but then Facebook shows me different numbers, and then I also have, let's say, GA4, and tells me a fully different story, and then let's say your high-risk account also gives you a different story in terms of which marketing led to the conversion, whether that's a purchase or a lead. So I'm gonna be covering exactly that in this video, because it's actually a question that I get often. So the first thing that you have to understand is what is the distribution window? And let's actually take Facebook, for example. So Facebook has a seven day click and one day view default attribution window. You can always change that inside your settings, but this means that if a user actually watches one of your video, then go to the website, not by clicking the button, by maybe they Google it and they make a purchase on your website, let's say, within 24 hours, then that purchase might actually be uh, attributed to your Facebook campaigns. And then if they click the button inside your ad, right, that says, let's say shop now, and then they, they go to the website and make a purchase within the next seven days, then again, that purchase might actually be attributed to one of your campaigns. So that's how the attribution model works for Facebook. But you have to understand that attribution model for all the different platforms that you analyze your data in. Because if you're comparing your results in Ads Manager versus what you see, let's say in Shopify Analytics, then you might actually see that Shopify Analytics actually reports less conversions or maybe more. But you have to understand that uh, Shopify doesn't get access to the first party data that Facebook has. So unfortunately, they can only do click attribution. They can't do view attribution. So if a user views your video, but then they're like, ah, you know what? I don't feel like clicking the button because I don't know, they, they might think it's it's a spam or a scam, then they might actually just go on Google and just make sure that they go through the company's website instead of the ad. And we know that there's a lot of still, there's a lot of users that do that. Well, that conversion inside of Shopify Analytics will probably get attributed to uh, organic search or maybe Google ads if one of your Google ads showed up when they search for your keywords. So you have to really understand the attribution model and then each platform will have usually different attribution model. And then you can use tools like sometimes like Google Analytics, uh, even Shopify Analytics use that or Hyros. And you know, there's a lot of other uh, third party uh, tools and software as that offers um, marketing analytics and attribution. But usually with third party tools, like the ones that I just mentioned, you can also sometimes select, okay, well, is it first click? Is it last click? And then they sometimes also create their own solution, which is data driven, which it kind of looks at all the data and then they make a decision on, okay, well, we think the uh, conversion should be attributed to this channel. But what I'm trying to say is that you have to understand the attribution model for the platform. And you have to keep in mind that something like Google Analytics 4, they're not just trying to attribute sales to Facebook or to TikTok. They're actually looking at more, okay, well, what is the first touch? What is the last touch? And same thing with something like Hyros or Shopify Analytics. When Facebook or TikTok or even like your Google ads, those platforms, all they care about is, hey, was I involved in the buying process or was I involved in the lead process? Did, did they see my ad somewhere or did they click on any other ad? If they did, then go ahead and report that conversion inside Ads Manager. But then let's say you look at Shopify, you can, again, you can select, is it last click, first click, and then it's actually going to potentially move the revenue that you've generated from your ads from one platform to the other, because they're looking and seeing which marketing channel had the last interaction with that, uh, that lead or that customer. I just really want you to keep that in mind when you're comparing one platform to the other platform. But then the other thing that you also have to know, so it's not just the attribution window and what kind of attribution window a, a platform uses, but it's also how do they track the users? Because something like Facebook will do a, a lot of a better job at tracking users than something like your Shopify analytics. And here's why. Facebook or even TikTok, they actually track users with their actual Facebook profile. So what this means is let's pretend you're a brand new user and you've never went to facebook.com before. So you go to facebook.com, whether that's uh, with your desktop or on your phone, as soon as you create your first profile, now they know your first name, uh, last name, email, phone number, they know who you are and you obviously give consent. So you send that data to Facebook, but what you don't really maybe know is that they also track your IP. They try your device fingerprint. 
they also track they put cookies on your browser so they do all these other things that do not include just like your personal identification like your first name last name email and they track all that. So think about it as a more like a Google Sheet, okay? So you have a Google Sheet and you have a lot of different columns um, in that Google Sheet. And one column is like first name, last name, email, phone number, IP, cookie, device fingerprint. So you have all these different columns. Every time you log in, they save, they, 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 they I guess add a new row and they save all that information in that giant Google Sheet, which is their basically their database, right? So every time you log into Facebook from, um, a different uh, location or with a different device, they log that device fingerprint, they log that IP, so they can easily identify you when you make a purchase on a website because of the pixel, right? The pixel sends that data back to Facebook. What basically the, the pixel sends, and when I say pixel, I'm also talking about the you know Facebook conversion API, like when you have both of those set up, it sends that information back to Facebook. What's inside that information, it's a request and it includes the cookie, it includes the IP, and includes what kind of device you're using and, and other information. And then again, they look inside your database and remember what I just told you, they have a lot of different rows of you logging into Facebook with different data. So they can potentially match that cookie, they can match a first name, last name, email, phone number, any of those columns with a Facebook profile, right, inside your database. So that's actually how they're able to do the attribution in a fully different way than something like uh, Shopify Analytics, uh, right? So because they're collecting all that information and they have it because again, you created an account on Facebook, but it's the same thing for TikTok. They really work in a similar way in terms of the tracking. So I want you to understand that because when we're comparing that to Shopify Analytics, First of all, Shopify analytics, they're not really, really clear in terms of what they're collecting to do the tracking, but I for sure know they're, they're definitely using cookies. And I've actually looked at the Shopify documentation in terms of like Shopify analytics, and they do say that they do cross device tracking. So it means that they're probably collecting something else than the cookie, but they're not super, super transparent. But we know for sure that when a user comes to your website, they don't, they're not forced to give their email, phone number, and all this other information. So the tracking is probably not as accurate as the tracking that Facebook has. Um, but then the cool thing with something like GA4, um, and uh, that's why I, I kind of like GA4 compared to like the old Universal Analytics, is you can actually, and that's I guess more of a bonus tip, you can go here under reporting identity. And then if you go here, you wanna make sure that you actually have Google Signals installed. So the way that this is different than other things is that it, it doesn't just use like, you know, like classic cookie and IP to be able to track users and identify that, hey, this user already came to your website. So if we're looking at like, let's say first click, then attribute it to this marketing channel because I recognize that cookie, right? So Universal Analytics, let's say, put that cookie on the user's browser. Now they also use Google Signals. So it's getting closer to what something like Facebook or TikTok is using because Google Signals, what it does is that it uses like uh, Gmail data. So if let's say I'm logged in inside my Gmail account and you know, big fan of Gmail, and then I go to one website and then I don't make a purchase, but then I go again, I don't know, seven days later, then even if I reset my cookies or um, I don't know, I'm in a different location, so my IP is different, right? So all these other things that Universal was using to, to track, they're still trying to use Google Signal to say, hey, wait, well, this user was logged into his Gmail, we know who he is, so he actually now came back to the website seven days later and he made a purchase. So we know that originally this user came from um, I don't know, Facebook or TikTok. Uh, so we're gonna attribute the sales to that marketing channel. So that's what I like about GA4. And again, uh, by default, it's actually not set up. So I would recommend that you go to reporting identity and go ahead and enable this. Um, and then if you also go to attribution settings, um, you can go and manage that and you can also change the look back window. Um, and I believe, but I believe by default it's 30 days and 90 days, which that's what I would definitely recommend. So that was more a bit of a more of a fun fact for GA4. But then it's the same thing for let's say a platform like Hyros. So go and see what are they actually doing to track users. So this is actually uh, an article that they have now. That's a bit old, so I don't know if that's still the method that they use to track users but most likely that's still being implemented to be able to identify a user coming back to a website. So they actually say it right here. So they use a customer phone number, customer email, device fingerprint, IP, cookie, 
browser session and browser cache. So when you're comparing, let's say, Hyros with another third party tool, like let's say Triple Whale, well, how does Triple Whale do the attribution, right? So you potentially want to go into documentation and sometimes it's not always loud and clear the way that they do their tracking. Sometimes they even keep that private, uh, but you want to be able to compare how does this platform do the tracking compared to another platform? Because let's say that uh, we're gonna call this um, analytics.com, okay? That's, um, I, it might actually be a platform that's, uh, that's available, but let's say it's another attribution software, okay? And that attribution software only does uh, customer phone number, customer email, uh, cookie, but they don't do device fingerprint, IP, and uh, those other tracking methods. So that platform will probably report less conversions, but it's not because Facebook or Google reported less conversions. It's actually just because the tracking method is not as good as let's say this solution. So that's why you really got to look at that because in terms of sales, most analytics platforms should show you the same amount of sales. But if the tracking is not on point and they're not using a lot of different variables and methods to track or identify users, you're gonna see in platforms that lack tracking is that your organic, uh, like the, the sales that are coming from the organic channel is gonna be higher. Um, and then it's probably gonna be the same thing with direct traffic. So you're gonna have a lot of like sales that are being attributed to direct uh, traffic, which that's like, that's in terms of a marketer, that's like the worst channel because this doesn't tell you anything when users are just coming to your website. So that's why you really got to understand two things. So you want to look at what is the attribution window? Like, are we even comparing like seven day versus seven day, right? Or is one platform showing you 90 days and then this other one is only showing you seven days, right? So you got to understand that because that could definitely help you understand why one platform shows more sales or more leads than another one. Um, and then the, the other thing is how do you do the tracking, right? How are they able to identify that this user actually came to your website before so that you can properly do like first click attribution, last click attribution and all that fun stuff. And I'm just going to wrap up this video by saying that in a perfect world, you get to see all of that. So in a perfect world, and I know that's not realistic for most companies. Um, that's why there are those tools like triple well and Hyros, but in a perfect world, you would actually be sending all of that to a database. So every time a user goes to your website, you're sending all the, let's say like every page view, every add to cart or every purchase, and that could be hosted on something like BigQuery. And you are tracking, as you can see on my screen, you're tracking the customer information, customer email, device fingerprint, IP, cookie, and all of that fun stuff, you're sending that to BigQuery with all your events, all your page view, all your add to cart, all your purchase event, and you do the attribution yourself. And you look at the data and you say, okay, well, um, let me see now if anyone came from Facebook ad seven or 14 days ago, um, but uh, actually converted down the line, right? Because once you have your data, you control all the variables and you're also not in a conflict of interest. For example, obviously Facebook wants to report as many conversions as they can. And although GA4 is supposed to be neutral, well, at the end of the day, like they also offer a service or they, they have a product, which is Google ads. So they, again, obviously want to report as much conversion as possible. But the problem is with, let's say Facebook or Google ads, you actually don't see the data on the back end. You just see the reporting but you don't see how it's being handled and you don't get access to your database of data. And it's, it's honestly the same thing with all other tools, like even I believe Hyros or even with something like Triple Well, I don't think you get to see actually the, the device fingerprint of the user when they land on your website. So you're, you actually don't have control in the data and how it's actually being calculated. So in a perfect world, you would actually, again, send that to something like BigQuery and you have someone that's skilled with something like SQL so that they can query the data and do the attribution for your company, you know, yourself internally. So that, that would be like the best case scenario, but I know it's not doable for most companies, but uh, really, what what I wanted to cover in this video is why is Shopify analytics or Facebook or GA4 show like, why do they all show me different numbers? Like, shouldn't they all align? But now you know that it's because of the attribution window and then the way that they track the data. Some platforms just do a better job at tracking because they collect more information. But guys, that is it for this video. If you have any questions about tracking, I love geeking out about that kind of stuff. So go ahead and ask me your questions in the comment section. If you'd like to have your tracking set up for Facebook, so browser tracking, 
tracking, server-side tracking, so with the Facebook conversion API or even TikTok tracking, that's something that we do. And I'll leave that link in the description of this video. And you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me and I'll, I'll tell you exactly what this service is all about and uh, what it would look like. But guys, that is it for this video. Bye for now.